Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Vivs here from Slide Nerd. In this video, here is my lollipop device and here is my pre lollipop device on the left side. When you click on something, nothing happens at this point because I have removed the techniques that is the click handling stuff which I discussed in my previous video. If you go to our adapter right now, which is Vivs adapter in this case, there is nothing about click handling anywhere over here. So I'm going to discuss the third technique that uses a gesture detector and the recycler view dot on item touch listener to intercept touch events. Now in the meantime, if you haven't seen the videos on the touch framework from 19 to 22 of this material design playlist, then please go back and watch them because otherwise everything is going to go above your head in this video. So let's get started. Several steps needed to be executed before we can handle the touch events outside the adapter with our recycler view. The first step is to create a class that extends the recycler view dot on item touch listener. So what is this listener? Let's take a look at that. Here, if you go to the recycler view dot on item touch listener, it says it's an on item touch listener allows the application to intercept touch events in progress at the view hierarchy level of the recycler view before those events are considered for the own scrolling behavior. In other words, this simply means that you get a chance to process the touch event before the recycler view or its children do anything with it. Here, if you go down and take a look at the methods, there are two of them and both of them are abstract. In other words, you'll have to override them. The first one is the on intercept touch event and the other one is the on touch event. If you remember, the recycler view itself extends a view group. In other words, it is like a layout. And if you have seen the four videos of our touch framework, you know very well what a layout does with the on intercept touch event and the on touch event. So inside the on intercept touch event, you simply observe, take over the touch events that are sent to the recycler view before they are handled by either the recycler view or its child views. Now here you return true if you have consumed the event at the layout itself and you return false if you want the event to go further to your children out there. And of course in the on touch event, you simply process the touch event that was there returning true to indicate that you processed it. Otherwise, it's dispatched to the parent if you remember the touch framework video. So going further, let's go into our code and have the recycler views on item touch listener at the bottom. So here, we'll simply make a class. We'll say class recycler touch listener implements the recycler view dot on touch listener. So as soon as we do that, as you remember, we have to override the two methods. Just press Alt Enter, implement the methods, click OK, and there you go with the two methods. And by default, as you notice, the on intercept touch event returns false to indicate that let this event go further to the children so that they also get a chance to process it. Here we are going to make a constructor that's going to take some arguments. Before we pass any arguments to the constructor of the on item touch listener that we just made in the step one, we are going to make an interface that you will have to implement for doing the touch and long click that you care about. So at the bottom, you go down here, you make our interface here, which is called public static interface, click listener, there's two methods, on click and on long click. And as you can see, there are two arguments in both, the view that was clicked and the position where that particular child view was clicked within our recycler view. So we are going to go now to the top at the argument list and we are going to pass three arguments here. It's going to be context. The second argument is going to be the recycler view itself. The third argument is going to be an implementation of this interface click listener. So we're going to simply take an argument here by saying click listener, click listener over here. Now at the top inside our own create view, if you remember where we have constructed everything, we need to add this on item touch listener by simply saying add on item touch listener. Here, what we need to pass is an object that implements the on item touch listener interface. If you go down at the bottom, and if you see our recycler touch listener that implements the on item touch listener, we can pass an object of this class over here. So we're going to simply construct that object by going to the top here, and we're going to say new recycler touch listener. Now, this is going to take three arguments which we just discussed. One of them is going to be the context which can be passed by get activity. Second is going to be the recycler view itself it can be passed like this. The third is an implementation of click listener. So we can directly say new click listener here and override the two methods. So now you get the idea right here in the on click method and the on long click method you will do whatever you want like starting an activity or adding it to the list of selected items that you want and stuff like that. And here inside our on intercept touch event, the constructor and the on touch event, we are going to use this interface as some way of getting triggering these methods on click and on long click at the right moment based on what has happened. So at this point, 
to help you get a better idea, I have added some log statements inside the constructor, the on intercept touch event, and the on touch event. Now remember very well that if you return false here from the on intercept touch event, then the on touch event is not going to be called if the child is consuming the touch event. And this is from the touch framework that we discussed earlier. So let's take a look at this in action. If I run this here in Lollipop, let's see what happens when I just click here somewhere. So I just click here, take a look at that. There are three method calls that are firing out there. There's the constructor which was actually triggered initially and now it's not firing anymore. Rather, what's happening is the motion event action down, action move, and action up are firing. As you can see, there's a coordinate information. There's a lot of information here inside the motion event object that I just fired over here. Now, this is pretty good for figuring out whether the item was clicked or not, but it's not good for detecting whether we have a long press or not. So, how do we do that? You see, based on the amount of time between an action down and an action up, you can actually count the seconds and then you can say that a long press occurred if so and so condition matches. But you don't have to do this because Android has already done it and you don't want to override that default behavior. Rather, what we are going to use is a gesture detector at this point. So let's see how that works. So at this point, we go to our step 3 to create a gesture detector. You go down all the way and if you see the recycler touch listener, I have made a variable here of type gesture detector. So what does this gesture detector actually do? Let's take a look at that quickly. So here, if you go to gesture detector, it says detects various gestures and events using the supplied motion event object. In other words, if you give it a motion event object, it can actually tell you what it is, whether you just single tapped, whether you double tapped, whether you long pressed, all kinds of information that you're interested in can be provided. Now there are three listeners immediately as you can see here. It says there's an on double tap listener here. And it says this listener will be used to notify when a double tap or a confirmed single tap occurs. And then there's the on gesture listener that is used to notify when gestures occur. And then there's a simple on gesture listener. What is the use and what is the difference between these two? So let's take a look at the next statement here in the documentation which says the gesture detector dot on gesture listener will notify users when a particular motion event has occurred. So let's open up that interface and figure out what it means. Here, if you take a look at this, it says this listener is used to notify when gestures occur and look at the number of abstract methods inside this listener. In other words, if you try to implement this listener, you're going to have to override all the methods that are defined here, single tap up, show press, on scroll, on fling, etc. But we don't want to do that. What we want is to worry only about the long press and the single tap up which indicates if we lifted our finger off the screen. So how can we do that? That's where the third interface comes into the picture. If you go here and if you open this up, you'll notice that the gesture detector dot simple on gesture listener actually implements gesture detector dot on gesture listener and the double tap listener. It implements both of them and it has already placed all their abstract methods with empty bodies. So here you can decide which methods you want to override. The ones that we are interested in is going to be the long press and the on single tap up. If you take a look at the long press method here, it says that notified when a user long presses with the initial motion event that triggered it. And of course, there's the on single tap up, which notifies when a tap occurs with the up motion event that triggered it. So let's go ahead and construct our object. If you go back here and if you see the step, it says create an instance of the gesture detector for your view and in the on touch event of your view call the on touch event of the gesture detector in other words take your event forward it to the gesture detector let it break its head on which event was actually triggered and tell you the right event so let's go back here and do that the same way so here we have to instantiate our gesture detector by simply saying gesture detector equals to new gesture detector here we are going to need two arguments as you can notice the context and a gesture listener so we're going to pass the context which we just took in our constructor and for the simple uh, for the gesture listener we are going to use a simple on gesture listener over here by simply saying new simple on gesture listener and at this point just put a comma and our work is done now inside this interface which already has all the methods that you need the only two methods that we need to bother about are long click and single tap so here we can simply override the method on single tap up and are on long click over here. So at this point, instead of breaking our head further, let's try to put a log statement, try to understand what exactly happens over here. 
So at this point, if you notice, I have added two log statements inside both the methods and let's try to see what happens when we run this. So there's our app running. You go here and you simply click on anything and you will notice that only the two methods are fired at the on intercept touch events for action down and action up. And you're like, oh my God, why isn't the gesture detector working? And that is because you have to manually forward stuff to the gesture detector. If you go back here to the documentation of the gesture detector and if you go down here, Oops, where's my gesture detector class? There it is. If you go down all the way to the on touch event, take a look at this method. It says in the on touch event analyzes the given motion event and if applicable, triggers the appropriate callbacks on the gesture detector dot gesture listener. In other words, you implemented the interface, great, but you're supposed to forward things to the on touch event of your gesture detector. And that's exactly what we are gonna do here. We're gonna go simply to the on intercept touch event here and we're gonna call the gesture detector dot on touch event we're going to pass this motion event and then we are going to see what it has to say to that now let's run this and figure out what happens so at this point things are running you go here you click anywhere on say anki over here now what happens is something like this the on intercept touch event is called which of course returns and if you can see this false statement here this is our gesture detector dot on touch event as soon as we call this it's going to simply go here to our simple on gesture listener it's going to find all the methods that we have implemented and figure out which method indicates that the event was consumed in our case we have only one method here that on single tap up where we are supposed to return true because all the methods by default return false indicating that we are not interested in handling or we did not handle this event here if you return true that's going to change the outcome of our gesture detector dot on touch event and it will indicate that the action underscore up was handled successfully by our gesture detector so we can go simply here and we can return true at this point and now we can go back and run the app and see what happens so at this point when you run this you start the app you click somewhere over here take a look at what happens the action underscore down is not handled by your gesture detector because it's giving false here but the action underscore up is returning true because when the on intercept touch event of your gesture detector was triggered this code is executed this is going to simply find out all the methods that are implemented inside your on guest simple on gesture listener it's going to pick this one which returns true and thereby indicate that your action underscore up was successfully handled by your gesture detector and this is exactly what we need to process the touch event further to indicate that a click was performed on our recycler view so at this point most of the work is done all we got to do is fire the appropriate events if you go at the top here and if you see our next step it says return true from the single tap which we have already done the next step is number five where we say find the child view in the recycler view which is under the coordinates that is specified by the motion event and then fire the long click event so all we got to do is go down here inside the long press here we need to find out which child view of the recycler view was actually long pressed so for that we can simply say recycler view dot find child view under and all we got to supply is the coordinates of the motion event that is get x and get y so at this point this is going to give us a child view say view child here and now we got to check two things one the child must not be null second the listener that is our click listener must not be null if both conditions are true then we fire our long click event in other words we simply go here and we say if child not equals null and and the click listener is not equals null then we simply fire the long click of our click listener by saying on long click here we pass the child and now we also need the position of our child so that can be found easily by saying recycle review dot get child position for our child objects and that takes care of that the same way we need to handle our on click as well now the code for processing a click goes inside on intercept touch event here three conditions hold one is the child of the recycler view corresponding to this motion events coordinates should not be null our click listener should not be null and if our gesture detector has successfully handled or consumed the action underscore up event by returning true from the on single tap up method it means that a click actually occurred or the finger actually or the user actually lifted his finger off the screen thereby triggering our click event so let's do that as well so here 
we simply get the child here the same way by saying view child we can actually copy paste that statement from above so just go here copy that statement here and that takes care of that so of course the recycler view in this case is r v here and now we need to check the condition if that child is not now and the click listener is not now of course we need to store that click listener which i haven't done so far so let's go ahead and make a variable at the top for the click listener here so inside this i'm going to simply store a reference to that variable by saying this dot click listener equals to click listener and now i have access to that click listener over here the click listener is not now and our gesture detector actually handled the touch event perfectly by returning a true that simply means that we should fire a click event to the user indicating that the recycler view was clicked at a given position so to do that again we use the click listener dot on click method we pass the child that was clicked and the position of the child which can be found by saying rv dot get child position for the child object that we have and we can remove this log statement if you want and this is how things would work and we still return a false here to indicate that further processing if any should take place inside the child views of our recycler view so at this point if you run stuff before that let's put a toast here inside the on click and the on long click to indicate that this is actually working so at this point you go here just click on the first position it says on click zero so that's working perfectly and again if you hold your mouse here or your finger over here it says on long click at position number zero you can do the same for any position out there and you can try the long click as well as the click that you want to perform so this is how you handle the click and long click events with a custom gesture detector outside your adapter inside your activity or fragment using this method again if you haven't understood some things out here go back and watch the touch framework videos because otherwise there is no way you're going to understand this ever this completely depends on the touch cycle in the next video i will talk about how to make this item look fancy when you click on it by having a ripple effect or something like that in the meantime if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide note and let us know your thoughts in the comments below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day